Well, NVIDIA shares are moving still this morning. Looking at the NVIDIA chart over the last month here on our screen, it's up over 23% and more than 20% over the last month. That welcome rebound after a weaker performance in August and early September. So what's next for NVIDIA heading into this next earnings cycle? Tony Wan is the portfolio manager of the T. Rowe Price Science and Technology Equity Strategy, which includes the Science and Tech Fund. I also want to note that fund has outperformed the S&P over the past two years here. You can take a look on your screen right now to see that outperformance of the T. Rowe Fund, which is that purple line, notably higher than the S&P. Tony, thanks for joining us. Let's start on NVIDIA. What is your bull case for NVIDIA heading into this next earnings cycle, particularly given the pressure we saw on NVIDIA after their last earnings print. Yeah, so I think the market has been digesting sustainability of the results. And, you know, it's interesting because the numbers have been so enormous. And when you have to grow off of that higher base, the market's always concerned. And so I think what's interesting is that we're almost through this perhaps uh, air pocket or digestion of in between cycles of the H100 and then into the Blackwell launch. And so I think the market has like kind of gone through that. And what's exciting that we're going into the Blackwell launch and I think demand is quite strong uh, likely. And so we could see that growth kind of sequentially improve perhaps um, into next year. And so I think that um, you know that's what we're looking forward to. And it looks like the NBL 72 is uh, back up and running. In addition, we're seeing a lot of good demand signals. Oracle um, having bullish outlooks. You had OpenAI raise a really big round, doubling their valuation. Um, and Supermicro recently talking about 100,000 GPU shipped um, you know, that are liquid cooled. So like the cooling has been an issue um, and looks like that's a bottleneck that we're working through. What would be the next catalyst then? Is it all about earnings and what we're going to see here in several weeks? Yeah, I think it's earnings here. I mean, the multiple is relatively reasonable, I, I think. And so here, I think the multiple probably holds. And then, you know, you look at like, the, it's all about numbers for, for NVIDIA and growth off of this uh, higher base. And so I, I think that's what we're looking for. And then also gross margins, um, you know, could they have been reset on the last earnings? And then from here, like as they launch in a black well, improve uh, as they're selling more of the whole system. Um, so I think that's what we're looking for on the stock. You mentioned OpenAI's valuation, and I want to double click into that because Oppenheimer this week downgraded Microsoft, and part of that was that the valuation was too high on OpenAI and that there's just too much hype around AI. Not asking you to comment on that downgrade specifically, but what do you make of the case that there is just too much hype around AI as evidenced by that OpenAI valuation? Yeah, look, I think that new technology often goes through hype cycles um it does feel like we are still early to to be be saying that ai doesn't work or i think that's what we were digesting as a market um maybe you know, three to six months ago but i think there's a lot of really good applications of ai that are really uh showing up i mean you know in, in the portfolio we own various ones uh, for example like app lovin um you know they are you know extending their ai engine into e-commerce uh, you see Meta really turning the digital advertising um, kind of machine to, to, to improve their returns. I think we see Zeta Global, uh, for example, David and his team has done a great job of creating like a data platform and a marketing engine. And, you know, Axon um, Enterprises, led by Rick Smith, is incorporating ChatGPT into their body cam so that, uh, you know, with their new product draft one, uh, saves officers time by creating a report. So I actually am like seeing a lot of good opportunities of AI application. You know, it's early. Not everyone can do AI. AI is not easy to do. Uh, but like when you're seeing like compelling use cases in these verticals, um, you know, it's hard to say that, uh, you know, this is too much hype right now. So then I, I guess given that, when, when you take a look at these valuations, a lot of people have been skeptical of some of these larger cap tech giants because of their current valuations. But given the fact that maybe we are in very much the early innings or earnings cycle here of that AI boom, does that then tell us that maybe some of these names are still undervalued? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't think NVIDIA trades at 35 times. You know, Google is at a pretty depressed valuation. Um, Meta, for example, is very reasonable. Um, you know, like I think that Tesla is, there's a lot of FSD embedded in that valuation um, and probably for, for some good reason. Um, but I don't think that the MAG7 looks like extremely valued and a lot of it has been been earnings. I mean, it's proved to really compound and grow 
And when you think about AI, like, I mean, this could be, you know, a huge productivity boost and it's the Microsoft's and the Amazon's and the Apple's, you know, that you have on list that can really benefit. Um, and you, they can just like, really, they have a large customer base, they have the technology, they have the data. And so it's like a virtuous cycle that um, you know, increases the competitive advantages and uh, deliver more value to their customers. Do you see it becoming the first $4 trillion company in 2025? NVIDIA? <laughs> I think uh, it's definitely possible. Um, you know, I, 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 I think continuously investors have underestimated the TAM of AI. I mean, and, and constantly the old paradigm was like, oh, like let's look at GPUs versus CPUs. That's the only, that's the TAM. And like, I think that we've just constantly underestimated it and going into, you know, looking at what the sovereigns are doing, investing around the world. Uh, you know, the US is talking about a trillion dollars of investment. Uh, you know, this is kind of like, uh, you know, uh, probably the next frontier of productivity and next industrial revolution. So with NVIDIA, I mean, I do think that they have a very strong mode. Their ecosystem is strong. I um, mean, there's the TAM is plenty large for other chip players um, to also have have a place um, because the compute demands are exponential. So, um, you know, I continue to like the company. I've liked the company over the last eight years um, and it continues to be a top kind of uh, company in my mind. I'm taking a look at your fund on the Yahoo Finance platform, and I can see AMD among your top 10 names. It's about 3.5% of your assets. They've got their AI day today. What are you anticipating? Hey, Lisa and the team have been really great designers of chips. They've really innovated. We've seen the progress on the CPU roadmap, and they've just continued to innovate. And I think they'll do the same thing within GPUs. Um, you know, I think that uh, they've got really kind of interesting design. They have a different angle at going at the problem. The, the workloads are also relatively diverse in the data center um, and they have good relationship with the hyperscalers. So, you know, I think we're excited to see what they have next. And, uh, you know, I think that they're definitely one of the top most innovative companies. So, um, you know, continue to like them uh, going into this event as well. All right, Tony Wong, always great to have you. Thanks so much for hopping on with us this morning. Portfolio Manager at T. Rowe Price. Thanks for joining.